Hi, how you doing? My name is Tim Frame, and this video is going to be about the crosscut sled that I built for my ShopSmith Mark 5 520. Um, I wanted to build a, a, a crosscut sled for it because I wanted to start incorporating this tool into my shop more. Um, I originally bought it for the lathe aspect of it. Wasn't really interested in any of the other things it did. But as I've had it about a year and a half now, and I've learned more about it. Um, I really kind of fallen in love with the machine. Um, you know, I had a table saw. It's, it's actually a, a job site saw, a DeWalt, it's a very good saw for a job site saw, but it's still a job site saw. I built that into a very large uh, outfeed table workbench that rolls around my shop. And, uh, you know, I've got a drill press, I've got a band saw, um, I've got a joiner. Um, I've got a sanding wheel. I kind of had all those things. I, I, I didn't have the lathe and that's why I bought it. But again, as I learn more about it, I wanted to incorporate it more. Uh, but all of the all of the jigs I had for the table saw were for the DeWalt. Uh, now I still think the DeWalt is going to be my best bet for long rips because of that outfit. But I wanted to start building some jigs for the shop smith so that I could use it more effectively. And the first jig that you'd probably want to build for any table saw would be a crosscut sled. There are tons of build videos on crosscut sleds on YouTube. And, um, you know, this isn't a build video. I've already built it. I wouldn't know how to edit something like that. So I'm um, just showing you what I have. I did a search for uh, crosscut sleds for the shop smith. I think I found two. Um, so this will be uh, yet another one. The first crosscut sled I built for the DeWalt was a very early on project. Um, it shows a couple of years later, I think I could have done a, a much better job now than, than I did there, but at the time, you know, I, I did what I could and uh, it has served me well. It works fine, it's nothing pretty. This one I wanted to look a lot nicer. Um, I wanted to use better materials, I wanted to have all the bells and whistles, stop block, key track, clamps, everything. I wanted to use um, miter bars, steel bars from Shopsmith uh, so that I wouldn't have to worry about wood expanding and you know getting a binding while it's in miter uh, channels. And uh, for the sled itself, I wanted to use a piece of phenolic. And the only piece I could find was very dark brown. Um, but that worked out really well because for the T-Track, I like Incra products. I have several of their products. All of my T-Track is Incra track. Um, I don't know if there's a big difference between tracks, but I like the color, that gold bronze color. It goes really well with that uh, dark brown phenolic. And the, uh, and the uh, Jonathan Katz Moses stop lock that I got for it, along with the Incra clamps that are uh, both red, the stop lock and the clamps. And I think it, it all comes together and makes a, a real nice looking sled. For the fence, um, the default setting for a fence would be two layers of laminated three quarter inch ply. Um, I wanted to go a little bit fancier and make it out of hardwood, but again, I didn't want the wood moving on me. So I thought if I uh, did a glue up of several uh, strips of it, of uh, hardwood, that would not only look better, but it would prevent wood moving. So I went with walnut and maple. And uh, for the look I wanted, I wanted uh, three narrow strips of maple embedded in the walnut. So to do that, I needed some 1 8 inch strips. And again, I wanted to make everything on the shopsmith and I had no jigs for it. So I had to make some jigs for the shopsmith so that I could make the cross cut for the shop smith. Uh, fortunately, Scott from My Growth Rings has been a, a wealth of information for me and I've, I've watched most of his videos. Um, I copied outright two of them, the uh, outfeed support and the what he calls Jack the Stripper. Um, making those two before making this allowed me to cut the strips to build the fence the way I wanted it. Um, funny note, when I went to put the sled onto the uh, miter bars, uh, what I've seen in the past um, and what I did on mine is basically you position everything, you use your rip fence to line up everything. 
and then you're gonna lay the board down on the saw table over the channels. A little bit of glue, uh, get it to stick, doesn't need to be a lot. And then once it's stuck, you can flip the whole thing over and run some screws through it to uh, you know, tighten everything up. I did that, I used CA glue and a little bit of activator sprayed onto the back of the sled. Used a little bit too much CA glue and uh, I glued the damn thing to my table. Took me nearly an hour to get it off. Um, not only that, but apparently there was a little bit of a bow in the board when it was laying flat. And uh, when I added the fences, that straightened it up and actually threw the, the miter bars out a little bit and it was binding up on me. So I ended up having to take it all down and re redo it. Um, this time I used uh, just a little bit of uh, epoxy. Uh, you don't need much, you just gotta get the stick, flip it over and the screws will hold it. So, I wanted to show you the uh, the finished product and here we go, let me take the camera over there. Sorry about that. Okay, so, the sled itself is phenolic. I routed out holes, handles on each side so it's easy to carry. It's not, I haven't weighed it, but it's not very heavy at all. The brown phenolic, with the uh, bronze or gold T-Track and the Inkrook clamp and the Jonathan Katz Moses stop lock, I think all create a, a nice look. The fence uh, is again, walnut and maple. I wish I had made the fence a little bit taller. There's nothing I can do about this fence here because of the T-Track. So I'm limited to, I think one and five eighths inch. On the rear fence, I was able to beef it up a little bit by adding one more piece, and I used a walnut dowels to hold that all together. The uh, sled slides very smooth. I'm very happy with it. The miter bars underneath have those washers on them, on both sides, and that will allow the sled to stay once it's past the blade, it's not gonna tip on you. And then as a final um, safety measure, I put this piece of cherry here. And, um, you know, it's a, a hand block, basically. Uh, I made these two shallow cuts here. I haven't seen anybody do this. I, I'm gonna think it's my own idea, but I could be wrong. But if I put my thumb here, I can feel that. And once I'm there, I know that I'm gonna be clear of the blade. So that works out well. The last thing I have to do with this is I wanna, I like this, um, I like to see the wood grain, but I wanna dye this some sort of a hideously bright color, an orange or red or something like that to make it a visual reminder as well as the, the tactile one. But that is my crosscut sled. It's very square. Again, I used the five cut method and uh, it worked out really well. Um, I, again, I just didn't see very many videos about uh, cross cut sleds made for a shopsmith, but that's mine. And this is the large outfeed table I built my uh, DeWalt job site saw around. Thank you.